All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, today, I'm going to be doing a tabletop review of my Ruger American Pistol. This one is chambered in 45. They make them in two flavors, make them in 45 and 9mm. Um, originally, the gun was designed to compete with Glock and Sig for the military contract. Um, Ruger actually pulled out at the last minute. They did not submit this for the military trials. Um, not exactly sure why that was, um, but it was designed to compete in that. <coughs> uh, this one is actually one of my favorite pistols. Um, it is the only one that I have that is the modular system uh, like the military wanted. And I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. Uh, what you get in the box, you get the pistol, you get two magazines, got one in there, the other one here. Uh, does come with a hard sided case and the 45 comes with two interchangeable back straps you have a large size and a medium size uh, the nine millimeter as far as I'm aware comes with three you get a small a medium and a large um, I don't really know what the capacity of the nine millimeter is I can't remember right offhand um, the 45 is 10 rounds for each magazine I would like to see a little bit more they are double stacked magazines um, but they do only hold 10 rounds and this one is loaded um, I'll be moving this one out of the way before I start disassembling the gun um, very very nice quality haven't had any issues with them whatsoever um, now taking a look at the pistol itself um, it's fairly lightweight um, you can see it there. This one does have a four and a half inch barrel. Uh, this model does have the thumb safety on it. Uh, they do have a pro model that comes without the manual safety. And there, the sights on it are standard three dot sights. There we go. Um, they're actually very easy to acquire. Um, this one does have a loaded chamber indicator, but it is a viewport rather than like on a lot of the nine millimeters. They have the the little chamber flag thing sits up here. Um, this one just has the little viewport there. Works out quite nice. It's easy to see. Um, the unique thing about this and the thing that a lot of people don't like about it is that when you grip it, a lot of people have complained that it actually hits their knuckle. When firing I don't have that problem my knuckle sits up here uh, instead of here at the edge like a lot of people have I don't have an issue with it um, but this what they call a beaver tail or tang depending on whatever you want to call it um, is quite large and flat on this but there is a reason for that and a lot of people don't like it they think it's way oversized for what it is but as we break this down you will see what the purpose of that actually is. So to break this down, lock the slide back, rotate this all the way down, and then just slide the slide off the frame. Now looking at the slide here, uh, you can see it's actually got quite a few cuts in it. Uh, it's sort of got the uh, little cuts on the nose there, it makes it easier to get in and out of holsters. Uh, you do have the rear slide serrations, and they are fairly aggressive. Um, they're actually cut in a crisscross pattern, if you can kind of see that there. Um, but it, it makes it very, very easy to grip. They're not overly aggressive, but they're good enough to get a grip if it's wet or slippery. Uh, everything else in it is standard. Um, you have a recoil spring. Uh, this one actually is a steel uh, rod with steel captured spring. And then you have your barrel. Standard for pretty much any modern semi-auto pistol. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, sort of a hex shape on the front there have to index that to get it back in once that's in there that's reassembled 
Now, as far as the modular system goes, um, and as far as I'm aware, they have not made any new slides or frames or, or anything for this, which is kind of a shame because it's one of the easier ones to take apart. You can flip this back to about a 30 degree angle. This pops out. Lift it up, slide it forward. The whole assembly pops out. This is everything you need. This is the only serialized part of the pistol. Uh, serial number is actually right back here on this back. But the way that this fits in there, this back piece here actually locks in back here, which is what made that tang so long and wide. Uh, they needed to have space. They wanted it to be very easy to take apart. Um, so they needed that extra space on the back to be able to house everything without needing extra pins to hold everything in. So it comes out very easily. It reassembles just as easily. You'll drop it in. Make sure trigger goes in first. Push the back end in. Slide it back. Push it down. That's it. Uh, grab this. Pop this back in. And just give it a good squeeze to pop it back into place. Maybe. Try to realign that. So there we go. Push back down in there. Ah, oh, there we go. There we are. Snap back into place. Pop it back forward. And slide the slide back on. Lock the slide back. You're done. That is it. Um, as well as the manual safety, you also have the little trigger safety there. The little dingus in the trigger. Not, not a big fan. It's, you know, same thing Glock has, Smith & Wesson. A lot of guns actually have that now, and I'm not a big fan of it. It's not horrible, but I just don't really see the point in it. It is what it is. Uh, you know, let's leave that out so we can try to fire it. Uh, the trigger's not the best in the world, but it's not bad. Um, it's got a little take up to you hit right there. I get stiff. It's got a tiny bit of creep and then a nice snap. Again, not horrible, not the best in the world. I actually enjoy it. Um, the reset on that. It's a little bit long and then you got a little extra creep back to hit that wall so the trigger could be a lot better yeah trigger could be a lot better on that i'm not complaining i'm used to it um i've had all different types of pistols As a matter of fact you guys have seen a bunch of them on here so far and this particular trigger is not the worst in the world it's not the best in the world it, it's kind of in the middle. Um, I think there could be a lot of improvement. Um, but it's, it's nothing to nothing to really complain about too much. Um, recoil impulse on this, it's a 45. It's not bad at all. It's a, it's a little bit more than something like a 1911 that has a metal frame, an alloy, or a steel frame. But it's, it's not bad at all. Um, I said this gun is lighter weight than that, but... Because of the 10 round capacity of the magazine, it actually adds a little bit of extra weight down in the grip. So it's just not bad shoot at all. And it's very accurate. Um, I've noticed that accuracy on this, accuracy, excuse me, on this is on par with my SIG, which is one of my more accurate pistols. Um, and I have no complaints with this. I absolutely love this gun. This is one of my favorite carry guns when I do open carry. Uh, this is a little bit big to conceal for me. I'm a bigger guy. This still kind of hard for me to conceal. It still prints quite badly. Um, but I do open carry this quite a bit.
Uh, now when I got this, this was a solid black pistol. Um, I did the color fill on this in gold. Uh, so the Ruger, everything on the frame, including the little, I guess, uh, is that a Phoenix? The Ruger Phoenix. Um, see, I did that on both sides of the grit there. Um, barrel and even the magazine base plates there. Ah, there we go. Um, so I did color fill those, but this is a solid black pistol when you first get it, or when I first got it. I'm not sure if they make them in any other color options. Um, haven't really dug that deep into it. And this one was the not only the last of these that the gun shop had when I bought it, it was the last 45 they had in stock, period. So I went ahead and picked it up. I may have paid a little bit more for this than I should have. Um, that particular store that I bought it from sold it to me for $5.99, so it's a $600 pistol. Um, I've seen them for a lot less, but when I bought this, I uh, bought this last year kind of at the height of the panic buying. Um, really wasn't into the whole panic buying. I didn't go out and buy a lot of stuff then, but I happened to see this at the local store, and so I picked it up. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer all of them. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.